Well, we're cruising through the middle of the migration and uh, not making as many excuses about leopard tracking or lion tracking as Tristan is at the moment. Uh, Tristan, my advice is just take bigger steps. You cover more ground in those five to ten minutes. But uh, this is one of my uh, sort of go-to areas if we get out in the afternoon, uh, especially when we're surrounded by wildebeest. Now, there's a little section up here called Mlimambili, the two hills. They're two tiny little hills. And um, lion, leopard, cheetah are often around these two hills. So, I think we're going to get lucky around them. Now, as I said, the migration's quite spread out at the moment. We've been driving through it for quite a while since we left the river. Lauren wants to know, why do the wildebeest run in circles when cha being chased by predators? Lauren, well, in normal circumstance what they do is they'll run around and look uh, to see where the predator is, make sure they can sort of keep safe distance. But the problem is when there's so many of them, they sort of push the front runners back onto the predators. Uh, and I'm afraid to say, probably because wildebeest are just quite stupid is the, is the true answer. And uh, these seem to be particularly stupid, these uh, white bearded variety. And uh, they sort of rely on the sheer mass of numbers uh, for survival. There's only so many lions, I mean, I mean only so many wildebeest a lion can catch before it is too tired to catch any more. Now see, this is quite interesting now. We've sort of just come out, like we've come out of the sea of wildebeest, and now we're in a sea of grass, and that, there's like a big loop around these two hills of no wildebeest and no zebra, which could be a very good sign for predators. Gianni would like to know, do the, uh, predators ever get impaled by the gnu horns? I'd say they might get a few wounds from them, but a uh, gnu horn is not really sufficient to impale something like a lion. Uh, maybe a cheetah, but I'd say again, very, very, very rare. They might ca pick up a small wound, but I, I doubt they will be run through, so to speak. Okay, here we go. Where are you, kitty cats? I've got a feeling you're sitting under the crotons thickets on top of the hill. Hi Patrick, Patrick's wondering why we don't see leopards. We do, Patrick. Um, and actually I saw leopard right around here that uh, killed the warthog, took it out from under the ground. We did a Facebook Live on that. Uh, but at the moment while the migration's here, Patrick, our focus is on the lions and cheetah and not so much on the leopards. Um, but if we, we do see them, I think I've seen well over 20 leopards um, in our nocturnal soirees and during the day. And uh, But uh, we just really haven't had the opportunity where the, the leopards have fallen within um, our storyline at the moment, which is trying to keep along with the migration. And of course the leopards do utilize the migration, like all the other predators, but not to the same extent as our hyenas, cheetahs and lions. Okay, so we've got some wildies here, we've got some wildies beyond. So. I think there's going to be a kitty cat on this hill, just judging from where the wildebeest are. Let's stop and have a quick look. And we've got two little hills to check. Let's check this one first. We've got a... We do have a predator, so I was right. Uh, the first one of the afternoon, a black-backed jackal. Uh, black-backed jackal. Now, quite often, Watching their behavior can give you a good sign if there's a lion about, or at least a carcass. Hmm. Nothing I can see on this side of the hill, so let's follow the jackal round the other side. Hello, cat in Tampa. Cat's wondering, do we have monkeys in the Mara? Indeed we do. We have two species. We have Sykes monkey, uh, actually three species, um, Sykes monkey and uh, 
vervet monkeys and uh, black and white colobus monkeys. And they do tend to live up on the forest on the escarpment or along the river. Lion, Tristan, that's how you do it. So, again, Tristan.